So um, can we start by just having you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are and what you're doing these days. Yeah, for sure. Hi, I'm Jay Sung Solid. I'm a content strategist at Facebook. I work on the news team. Um, one of the things that we're working on right now is trying to figure out how do we get people high quality news? How do we um, solve a lot of the like structural issues of like news on Facebook today? That's awesome. And just for some context, uh, can you talk a little bit about kind of the circumstances under which we met, like what we were both doing at that point in our lives when we met and, and kind of how we know each other? Yeah. So I met Katie during a very interesting time of my life. It was the day after I got laid off from the first startup that I worked at. I had a corporate career that was pretty successful, but I wanted to pivot into tech. So um, I worked at the startup for three months. They ran out of money. The very next day, I already had planned to go to a diversity in tech conference panel. Um, and that's where I met Katie. Well, actually, no, we didn't meet there. Um, but we passed by and we talked to a few people. I knew someone on the panel. I went up to them and started to strike up a conversation. Uh, and we're still friends today and we keep in touch. Awesome. So both of us were kind of switching careers at the time that, I, that we met. So I was switching into UX and you were switching into tech. Um, and obviously that has worked out. You've gone on to work at Twitter and now Facebook and really awesome content roles and and she's just an awesome human being. So it's good. I'm so glad that Jay's here with us and able to answer a couple questions because there's no one on earth that is as good at getting people to respond to emails as Jay is. So um, with that, um, I just have a kind of a couple questions for you and then we'll, we'll talk for like 20 minutes and then open it up to questions from others at the end. Um, I know Zach has some questions he wants to ask you. But um, so the big premise of this hackathon is getting out into the field and talking to people you know, that you might not know. And so just as we get started, like getting into the topic a little bit, can you tell us a little bit about strategies you use for kind of like cold reach outs, um, how you would go about you know, getting someone to talk to you that you, that doesn't know you might be a second or third degree connection or even further far afield. How would you go about getting that person to even engage with you at all for the first time? Um, so my biggest thing is a lot of homework, um, a lot of just being, doing your due diligence, researching everything and anything you can about them. Um, so a great example I had, uh, right after I got laid off from this tech startup, um, I started following all these different UX and, and tech CEOs. And I found this guy, he's the CEO of Envision, Clark Wahlberg. Um, and I just went through his Twitter, I went through his LinkedIn. Um, I was trying to feel, get a sense of like, what's important for this person? What would resonate with them? Because anyone who's worth reaching out to, especially for a cold call, um, they get a bunch of those a day, if not more, but they can tell pretty quickly when you've done your research. So I found out that he is a huge coffee aficionado and he loves getting coffee so people whenever he visits different cities and he has a very particular coffee brand that he likes. So in my subject line, you get straight to the point, I was like, hey, I can't come to New York to buy you a coffee, but I'd love to buy you, like send you a bag of blue bottle coffee beans. And the second thing, uh, so I did my homework. I showed him that I knew more than um, your standard person about, about what he, who what he's about, what he, his purpose is. Um, and then the second thing is I didn't really give him an option to say no. So I pretty preface, I preface like, this is who I am. I'm in really, in, I formatted it so it's getting right to the ask. I want 15 minutes of your time because I'm going through this and I wanna hear about your journey of you know, working in the UX field. When is the next time you have 15 minutes to change someone's life? So it wasn't a, can you meet with me? Can I please talk to you? It was, when do you have time available to do this? Yeah, we're um, chatting, so when does it work? <laughs> yes. Did you actually send him a bottle of blue, or a bag of blue bottle beans? Uh, no, because his uh, admin never got back to me, but we ended up, he immediately responded back in five minutes, and wow. he was like, this is one of the best cold outreach emails I've ever gotten. I'm <laughs> sharing this with my whole circle of people that I know, and I've CC'd my admin who's going to set up a call for us. Awesome. So you just never got the address to send the beans, but you, you did get the meeting. Yes, I got, I got 45 minutes with this person. Wow. Um, wow. And he didn't know who I was, um, but we made that connection. And every time that I've reached, I've done a, a completely cold outreach, I try as much as possible to find a closest connection, and if I can't, um, I'm pretty upfront about why I think they're the person that I should be reaching out to. So in, in a way, like appeasing, like, why are they special? Why do I think they should be the one I should talk to? 
Yeah. So kind of like this combo of like a very authentic human connection, it sounds like mixed with um, a very deliberate ask, um, a next step kind of a call to action. Yes. Because I think more than anything, um, time is precious for anyone, right? And especially if you're the kind of person that a lot of people are reaching out to, the best thing you can do is don't bury the lead. So yeah. whatever yeah. your ask is, whatever your hook is for why they should meet with you, put that in the subject line if possible. And if not, put that as the first line and then you can provide the context below. Yeah. How did you um, figure out where to send this email? That seems like a big kind of black hole of places to, to get lost, right? Like you, people are posting, if you're doing your homework, which it sounds like is very important, uh, and I completely agree, uh, you're checking out their Twitter, you're maybe checking out their LinkedIn, you're checking out, you know, all these different things that's go that are going on, their blog posts, their medium, whatever. Where, how do you know where to, where to ping them? Like, where's the best like, place to find that kind of information? So there's actually a tool I used to use. I don't know if it's still around. I think it's just called Email Hunter. And you can search by organization. And even if you can't find that person's specific email, you'll get a sense of the email structure that the company has, whether it's first initial last name or like last name, full names, you'll get a sense of that. And sometimes you just gotta like try a few out and see what comes back. So you would literally just guess. I think, yeah, if you do your due diligence um, and you really can't get a sense of this person's email and they don't share it, you, there are certain tools that you can use to get a sense of like for this organization, what's their typical email structure, and then you can try to guess it. Okay. So you would recommend going straight to email instead of going through like LinkedIn or Twitter or, uh, or any other, like a medium comment or any other thing like that? I would actually, it's, it's going to depend on the person because um, I have the sense if they're so the CEO, he was pretty open. Um, and you know, his DMs were not open though for people he weren't he wasn't connected to. Yeah, so that's why I went to email. Uh, there's certain people though, if they're pretty active on Twitter and they seem like they're you know they have their DMs open, go ahead and shoot them a DM. The only thing though is you have to know that for a lot of people who are influential like that, they probably are verified in some degree, and that usually means, um, messages who are coming from people they're not connected to usually get filtered out. So you run the risk yep. that they may never even see it. Okay. Yeah. So that's like on the Twitter backend, they're, they're filtering some of that stuff. Twitter backend, um, Instagram, if you're verified, um, Facebook, if you're, you know, if you're a verified page, a lot of these things, they will automatically have like a second inbox for people who they're not connected to. So that's why sometimes email, can be like the, the sh most the surest thing but you'd have to do a little bit more legwork to get there cool um yeah so let's talk about the ask itself so in the case of this you know perhaps in your in your case it was very specific like change my life in 15 minutes um in our case we're asking people to do you know the beginning of generative research right beginning to get out to the field and and ask real questions and and kind of put themselves in situ with some of these people that are doing this job in industry for real right um what do you think the ask looks like there? Like, what is the, what's the best way to start? I mean, cause as we know, like we would want, if we had our druthers, we'd want 60 minutes, right? But like, what is, and that's not realistic, we realize. So like, kind of how do you, how do you temper the ask? And then as a follow on to that, how might you go about identifying a good fit for this kind of thing? Like if you're getting into the home loan business or you're getting into cannabis or you're getting into whatever, how do you identify like a good target for someone who, has the right experience and then kind of make the ask that makes the most sense for that person. Okay. Uh, so to your first point, I would say try and find that balance. Um, sometimes uh, the hardest thing is acquisition, right? Usually. And if you do, if you have a good process and you do your due diligence, retention won't be that hard um, to re-engage and say, Hey, like, can I ask 15 minutes? And I think that sometimes the easiest hook for people, um, especially for your purposes, could just be like, what is your biggest pain point? What keeps you up at night? Love it. Because I can, like, you don't want to ask a question that people are going to say no. But if you can ask a question that I inherently instinctively have an answer to, and I want to share that, you're already have me engaged. Um, and I think you can work up to that and say like, okay, I need 15 minutes of your time. You just tell me about your pain points. Um, and then at the end of that, if it feels like it's good, you can always say, hey, we're going to do some more research. We're going to iterate on this. If you're still open to giving us more feedback, let us know. And those people, you'll be able to have an established rapport and dig even deeper with them. Um, as far as finding the right people, I think it's a matter of um, if you ha are really starting with the people problem, if you have a general, a very crisp idea of like, what are you trying to solve for? 
and then kind of doing a little like user persona generation of figuring out like based off this people problem, who are the kinds of people that would, this would be like a core problem for them. Um, and I think that that is usually more powerful than just trying to say like, well, we're just going to go purely after demographics. We're only going to go for people who are this gender between these ages who work in these fields or um, have this kind of background. Usually yeah. that might yeah. work, but it's pretty broad. I think if you can take a more targeted approach and start with the people problem, usually you're going to find people um, who are going to be a lot more relevant for what you need. And would you recommend going after people that you have some level of connection to, even if it's second or third degree connections, or going after cold emails, depending on if they're a better fit? I'd say probably a balanced approach. I think whenever you can go through some kind of even second or third degree connection, um, because again, time is precious. So people, if, even if I have like somewhat of a loose connection with you, that feels like more vetted than a complete cold outreach. Yeah. Um, I think you're gonna go with more of a cold outreach approach you're gonna have to do even more homework. Like I have something I think about when I do something that's like kind of like a moonshot outreach, like if I'm trying to reach out to Gary Vaynerchuk, who we've done before, I'm recognizing that this guy is getting paid, you know, not even getting paid, but he's making hundreds of dollars an hour, right? So I have to make it worth his time for him to respond to me. Yep. Yeah, you kind of got to get that hook exactly like what you were saying before. Um, okay. So let's say that someone can only spare like five minutes or 10, how do you kind of prioritize insights that you want from those types of people? Oh, can you repeat that? Yeah. So let's say you're, you have like a high, high, um, impact target, right? Like one of these, one of these big time, big shot CEOs, moonshot outreach. And you, you're thinking this person might only have five or 10 minutes to spare, or they tell you they only have five or 10 minutes to spare. How do you prioritize the insights that you get from those guys versus, you know, people that maybe have more time? I think when I'm looking at that, the people who have more time, um, or like if you have a set of research questions um, or design questions you're trying to answer, kind of prioritize that based off of like, for the moonshot person, what are they the best in the world at doing? Based off of your knowledge and your information about them, what have they consistently been able to solve for? What do you think they have world-class experience and insights on? And that's what you've asked them for. Um, out of your set preset amount of um, questions you're trying to answer. The ones that are broad that you think there's probably a larger pool of people, those can go to like the people who have more time. Yep, makes sense, makes, makes sense. Can you expand a little bit when you say like, I wanna make sure it's worth his time, like how you, how you do that? So I've always, it, it sounds counterintuitive. Um, I think the quickest, the uh, similar analogy is like people are like, how do I find mentors? And, you know, do you just ask, can you be my man, my mentor? And the thing is that doesn't work. Um, a lot of times what really works is you providing value to that person first. How do I solve a problem for you without you even asking? And a lot of times, for, especially like the moonshot ones, if you see like Gary, like Gary Vaynerchuk just tweeted like, hey, what are some interesting books? Or like, what are like trends that you're seeing? If you can like reach out to him and provide him information that feels like it's helping to solve his problem, he's more likely to give you his time. Yep. Yeah, so kind of giving them, giving first, right? The giving first kind of thought process makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think the last question for me, and then I'll turn it over to Zach, is at a high, so a high, high, like highest level, um, do you have a philosophy or approach that kind of shapes your, the way that you do these things in general, or, you know, is it just your own curiosity or is there kind of a way that you go about strategizing? Uh, I think you touched on it earlier, actually, but the, you know, authentic human connection, it sounds trite and a little corny, but it has always worked for me. And the only thing though, it's not necessarily always scalable, but when I've reached out, I'm not just reaching out as like a one-off, it's trying to build a relationship. And I think what you mentioned earlier, you know, if you're trying to reach out to someone in real estate and you're trying to build something that might disrupt their industry, um, it's gonna be honestly kind of shitty if you reach out the one time, I'm gonna get this from you and then I never talk to you again. Uh, it can be a partnership though, and I think that's where like really innovative and like creative work comes from, is like when you can partner with someone long-term and you have, you know, a wide and deep network. Yeah, it sounds like you're almost encouraging our hackathon participants to continue reaching out as they hack to share where they're going with what they're building um, with the people that they contact. 
yeah, because I think that's that's how you can get, you can keep iterating on your designs and you're making sure, is it actually going to solve problems um, and you're hearing that directly from the experts. Yeah, I think that, of course, um, not so secret agenda, right? That goes hand in hand with what I love to do, which is building an arsenal of people who can help steer your product as it evolves, right? Like as you're starting to evolve it, you can come back and ask these people, did I hear you, right? Did I understand? Did I, did I get it? Um, and have them say yes or no, right? Like, yeah, you got this part, but you, I don't feel like we, we locked on this part. I feel like we communicated or you didn't understand. So um, yeah, totally on board with you there. Um, Zach, do you have any questions for Jay? You kind of covered a lot of them, honestly. Uh, this is this is fascinating to me because it's almost the exact opposite of where my strengths and my skills are. I'm very much an introvert. And so I think this is just, it's really interesting to meet someone who's like, is so tuned in to other people that you're kind of able to understand how they, I don't know, just understand how to reach out to people. I, like I've never been good at, good at parties, so this is just fascinating. I wonder, is there like an 80-20 sort of piece of like four, I would say like four introverts like me, like four people who uh, would much prefer to be like behind a computer screen, but find themselves needing to go out um, and talk to people. Is there an 80-20 um, sort of like a rule of thumb that you're just like, yeah, it makes me nervous too, but I just do this and it's, it's suddenly it's so much easier. <laughs> well, that's, thank you for saying that Zach. And I actually want you to know that I am incredibly introverted. I'm just a self-taught extrovert. I know. So for me, I think the 80-20 rule or the principle that I have, um, honestly, the more that I feel curi like genuinely curious and interested in that other person and ask them questions, um, it doesn't have to be about me. A lot of times, think about the best interactions you've had socially, and you walk away feeling like, oh man, that person was so great. I like would love to talk to them again. A lot of times, they're asking you questions, and you're talking about yourself. Right. Um, so right. keeping that in mind, especially when you have, you're going into this feeling like, oh, this is like very daunting, which it is. Um, a lot of times, if you are curious about that person, um, they'll be so focused on that, and they'll feel good about that that you don't have to worry about it yourself. Um, I think the second thing too is reframing the anxiety or the nervousness as excitement. Like physiologically, your body's reacting in similar ways, like increased heart rate or like sweaty palms. Um, and that just means you care. And sometimes even just reframing it, like instead of trying to tamper it down, say like, don't be nervous, don't be anxious, just be like, I'm excited because I care about that. And that's a good thing. I love that. That's fantastic. And I think it's going to be incredibly useful, not just for me, but I think for um, it, a lot of people who may be reaching out for the first time. So that's, that's fantastic. Definitely writing that down. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's it from our side, JC. Super easy. You nailed it. You had all the greatest answers. And Zach learned that you're an introvert. So it's like win, win, win. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. And, um, and I look forward to telling you about how the hackathon goes. I'm really excited to continue this partnership and hearing how it goes. Thank you for inviting me. Um, and if anything, I was very nervous during this as well. So <laughs> if people didn't see that, then that's also something to keep in mind is um, how you feel is not necessarily how you come off to people. And that's true. actually can be really it's reassuring. True. Yeah, it's true. Definitely true. All right, my friend, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.